being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is my firm belief that each of us has a purpose in life. And if nothing is more evident than the people in this room, each have a purpose, a chosen purpose. And I would just like to encourage everybody to stay focused on your purpose. Thank you for what you do on a daily basis for our state, for our system, and just uh, be encouraged by the scripture. Let's go to the Lord and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you with praise and thanksgiving today. We thank you for the many blessings of life. We thank you for this great nation that we live in, that we're blessed to be in, a part of, and this great state that we enjoy so many benefits from. Lord, specifically, I want to lift up Governor Kay Ivey, her staff, her cabinet, all our legislature, and all our government, government in this state. Lord, we ask that we give you give them discernment, wisdom, to work totally for the betterment, better, betterment of the people of this state. Lord, thank you for the opportunities that we receive to work in the educational system for our state. Lord, guide us in the rest. I ask your blessings on our chancellor, on his staff, on the presidents of our institutions, on all their staff and faculty and the blessings for each member of this board. Lord, thank you for the opportunities you've given us, these opportunities to work for the betterment of our state. Guide us and direct us, keep us safe. Lord, we thank you for everything. You are Lord of all. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, I'd like to welcome uh, Governor Kay Ivey, the president of our board, and we thank you so much for being here. In addition to that, uh, we have with us a new ex officio member from the State Board of Education, Mr. Jeff Newman. It's just been recently appointed by Governor Ivey. <coughs> Newman, welcome. Thank you so much, and I'd like to thank the governor and the chancellor, uh, the chairman Thompson, and the whole board of trustees. It's, it's an opportunity for me. And uh, my heart's in the community college system and education. I'm willing to serve any way I can, so it's an honor to me. Thank you very much. At this time, I'll ask uh, Crystal Brown to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance.
just one data point to think about. Code.org, a nonprofit organization dedicated to expanding access to computer sciences, estimates that there are more than 4,000 unfilled computing jobs in Alabama. 4,000. Now, not all of these jobs are related to app development. We know they cover a wide range of expertise and technical training, but it's undeniable that one of the fastest growing segments in computing is app development. And it's clear that we are not graduating or training enough people in this state and in this country to keep up with the demand for skilled workers in this, in this arena. In fact, it just takes a glance at your smartphone or your tablet to understand that the way we access information today and the way we communicate is increasingly governed by apps. Our community college presidents pay close attention to business and industry and workforce trends, and many recognized some time ago that this segment of computing offers opportunities for students that we have not been capitalizing on, and they understood they needed to make computer science more of a priority. So they say timing is everything, and it's really true, because just as our presidents were brainstorming about ways our colleges could educate students on cutting edge computer technology, we were contacted by a little company in California called Apple. <laughs> During conversations with representatives from Apple's over the last few months, um, we were invited to pilot a new app development curriculum for community colleges. We seized upon that opportunity. This pilot that we are rolling out offers a full year course designed by Apple engineers and educators and it teaches students elements of app design using Swift, which is one of the world's most popular programming languages. Introducing the coding curriculum into our community colleges fits so perfectly with our mission, as it's designed to address workforce development needs in a technology-driven economy. The curriculum ensures that students will be able to enter the work world with knowledge of app development that can be applied in a variety of settings. So we have four colleges that will pilot this, and they were strategically chosen. Drake State Community and Technical College, Bishop State Community College, Wallace Community College, Selma, and Trenum State Community College. As you're aware, Drake and Bishop are located on major arteries of the state in more urban areas where there is a great demand for those with computing skills. We were particularly interested in piloting at Wallace Selma, because for the most part, these types of jobs do not bind you to a physical office in a downtown metropolitan area. So this is an opportunity where individuals who live in more rural areas can be just as competitive as those living in our metropolitan areas. And finally, we wanted to pilot this program at our college located here in the capital city. There's already been a great deal of buzz, uh, excitement, positive feedback in the few short weeks since we announced that we would be offering this in the fall. We've had inquiries from high schools interested in dual enrollment, from current community college students, from non-students interested in learning these skills through non-credit continuing education, and finally from four-year graduates, four-year college graduates interested in honing their skills. We couldn't ask for better support from Apple we have a terrific team, Apple team, that has been strategizing with us, assisting each college in setting up a programming lab, providing focus training for our faculty who will be teaching the course, making personal visits to our colleges and our system office as recently as this week in a show of support. We are excited about this new partnership and know it's gonna continue to grow and strengthen. As for the future, we do not intend to limit this program to those four institutions. Because we have confidence in the opportunities that this course offers our students, our plans are to expand it to other institutions in the near future. Since this is a pilot, we want to be able to update you at future meetings, possibly even with a demonstration. Thank you. Thank you, Susan.
so much. He's reminding me that this special day, and this special announcement, Susan Price, you gave a great overview, and I met the gentleman from um, Apple coming in, and he tells me that we are the first, we are one of six community college systems that they've selected to partner with this pilot effort. But we're the only system that, as he says, his words, y'all are all in. <laughs> the rest of them are, you know, maybe start with one college, or, but we are all in. What a great tribute to the great people of Alabama. This is an exciting time for us in our great state, and Chancellor, I'm always pleased to work with you in the community college system. Uh, y'all are aware that Roa meets the road and provides up upgrading of programs and curriculums that are 21st century job related, and that is so important. And I so appreciate the fact that the community college system is taking on this innovative approach to training and to learning these 21st century jobs. Now, if I heard Susan correctly, um, Susan, you make it sound like even I, as governor, can learn to develop an app. That's right. That's right. You can do it. Chancellor Baker, I think maybe even you can learn to do something. <laughs> but seriously, I am astounded that there are 4,500 jobs available in Alabama today that are not being filled. And yes, while some of them are a couple of broad fields of computer science, there is a large segment of app development and we need people trained to fill those jobs. These are good paying jobs and they are 21st century and they are what taking us to the future. And there's um, just absolutely no question that computer science must be a priority in our great state. And as I understand it, the revenue that may be generated from mobile apps may surpass $100 million by 2020. Now with that kind of growth and demand for competent workers in app design grows exponentially. And the pay, according to my information from code.org, the average salary for a computing job is nearly $83,000 annually. That's very enticing. And furthermore, another attraction is the fact that you can train for these jobs and you don't have to be at a facility or a classroom. Uh, you can do it at home, you can do it from anywhere in the state. And that is just, that's an attractive feature. And I am so pleased that y'all are offering this and being so innovative in the way that you're reaching out to make it possible for people to participate. I want to applaud the Alabama Community College System for making this innovative training available to all people, not only you traditional students in your two-year college system, but also high school students through dual enrollment, and also average Alabamians who just want to take the courses and learn how to code uh, for no credit. That's also available, and that's enticing as well. So I look forward to the success of this pilot program, to expanding it to all of our two-year colleges in the very near future. And um, I am just proud as punch to be with y'all today to announce this. And I just appreciate and the board's action working with uh, Apple CEO Tim Cook, an Alabama native, and we're grateful that they've given us the opportunity to partner with them at this stage. And we are all in in Alabama. Thank you, Apple. Susan Price and all the staff for 
favor of the renovation at uh, Trenton State, please raise your hand. Yeah. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item five is a construction renovation project, a request for an increase in expenditures in that project at Lawson State Community College. Uh, we had an explanation of that uh, at the last work session. Is there a motion? Motion. Motion by Mr. Davis. Is there a second? Sorry. Second by Mr. Smith. Discussion. I will say we hope this is not repeated and leave it at that. Any further discussion? There being no one moved to vote, all those in favor of approving the uh, increase for expenditures for the construction and renovation project at Lawson State, please raise your hand. Yeah. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item six is allocation of uh, system and prison education operations and maintenance appropriation. This was covered in the work session once again uh, in June. I'll entertain a motion on this item. So moved. A motion by Mr. Brown for a second. Second by Mr. Caldwell. Any further discussion? There being none, I'll move to vote. All those in favor of approving the allocation of the 2017-18 operations and maintenance appropriation, please raise your hand. Yeah. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item seven is a tuition rate adjustment. <coughs> this is a uh, basically a, a, a rate adjustment that was uh, approved back in 2009 by the State Board of Education uh, for each year going forward of $2 per credit hour the beginning in fall semester of 2011. Uh, we had a thorough explanation of this and in the discussions by the board I want to point out that we had uh, some very uh, good data presented to us uh, from the uh, Southern Regional Education Board, SREB, that showed uh, how we compared regionally and uh, tuition costs. And that was uh, just just very compelling to me uh, that this very modest increase, although we don't like to do this, and don't like uh, tuition increases, that it was uh, uh, something that was needed. At this time, I'll uh, entertain a motion on this.
Our neighboring state, Tennessee, spends almost seventeen hundred dollars per student per year uh, in awards. And I think we they, they have advantages that we don't have in being able to fund those things. But uh, that's just a challenge that we've got to overcome. Just wanted to bring some of those things out. Thank you for those uh, pointing that out, Mr. McNally. We are very well taken, especially the uh, money for tuition.
for this opportunity to serve as president of Bishop State Community College, and I'm honored to serve as president. Um, as interim, the bishop for a year and a half, to be honest with you, it seemed like it was 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> We've made a lot of, a lot of strides, but uh, let me say this, there's still challenges that, 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 I, that I'm faced with at that bishop. I ask you for your continued uh, support. I guess about four months ago, a gentleman that I did not know ran into me in downtown Mobile. And he asked, I want you to handle president of the bishop. I said, yes. He said, I just want you to know. Turn out he's a businessman. I just want you to know that Bishop State Community College is a gold mine. Mobile is growing, and it seems like weekly. New businesses are being announced coming to Mobile. Um, industries are moving to Mobile. Mobile needs Bishop State Community College. And one thing I would say that students will be given every opportunity to be successful at Bishop. We're going to meet the needs of the community and we're going to be there around the table and whatever we need to do to make sure that we're doing our part to help with the a, a skilled workforce uh, there in, in Mobile. It's exciting to be, be in Mobile at this time, and I am excited to lead uh, Bishop State forward. Again, I appreciate the, the opportunity. Thank you.
take the reins and move forward at a, with an aggressive approach in making the school what it needs to be. There's been a considerable amount of time since that leadership has been there in a permanent position. And it's with that that I would like to introduce you to William Ashley. Uh, William is currently serving in a community college in Mississippi. Before we go further, I want to make it clear. William, his president, was so concerned about losing, he said, look, you've got to give me some time to make a transition. But William was kind of his right-hand guy. And so I said, okay, I will accommodate you. In addition to that, he has family. Thank <laughs> you. 
campus of Vore, Chancellor Baker, yes, I was excited. We're still excited. This has been a great year for our Wallace baseball team uh, <coughs> at, at Wallace Dothan uh, to win the state championship and then to be able to participate and compete at the JUCO World Series. Those are events that we will all remember. Our team represented us very, very well and very professionally. And that certainly speaks to the leadership of our coach, Coach Mackey Sasser. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about him. Uh, of course, we're very proud of all our team and wish they could have been here today, but many of them are not in school this summer or, or elsewhere will be back with us this fall. But um, Mackey played baseball at Wallace Dothan the 82 and 83 seasons. And then he was drafted by the San Francisco Giants uh, in the fifth round of the 1984 major leagues. Uh, in the baseball draft. And for nine seasons, he played with the Giants, with the Pittsburgh Pirates, Seattle Mariners, and the New York Mets. And then we were lucky enough to get him to come to Wallace and be the baseball coach, which he has been for the past 20 years. And um, this year, he celebrated <coughs> his 600th win uh, at the college. And I just want to say how proud we are of him and the team and what he has done with the team, uh, especially this year, and the enjoyment we have all had at Wallace in, in celebrating the win. And I also want to commend Dean Myrick for his support uh, along the way. But I, I thought Mackie might like to make some comments to you. Thank y'all for having us here today. It's a great honor. Um, you know, it's uh, Dr. Young is really excited. She didn't she failed to mention it was our 50th year this year of our baseball any athletics at Wallace College, and we had a big thing for them. And and it you know it just seemed like you know we had a lot of people out of our our community that was on that team. And you know, I was telling Linda that you know Dr. Young that they sit out in the outfield when we had our you know before our game we had them on the field taking photos for 45 minutes just sitting out in the outfield talking about old times about baseball and about Wallace College in general and you know it's a great honor to go on and win but it's the friendships and all the memories you have is what it's all about and you know we believe I've been there 20 years and I believe in teaching leadership and leadership to me or is about players come back to me that are doctors or lawyers or educators and everything we do to make them successful and so that's what I've been teaching for 20 years so going to the national championship was a great honor don't get me wrong I've done a lot of things in my life with the Mets and everybody else but the one thing that I always remember is they coming back to the players and, the, and everyone coming back to me and saying thank you for what you've done for me I, you know I teach my kids what you taught me and the thing about sports is team, you know, it's team play. So it teaches us to be teams, just like we have here on this board. We're team players, and that's what we try to teach. And I've been successful that way. And and, and not only on the winning teams, the losing teams are probably the best ones I can really teach because you know failure is going to always bring a positive. So I'm glad to be able to do what I do. Um, God put me on this earth for a reason. I've been doing it for 50 years. I'm 54 years old. Playing since I was five, and, and, and teaching is something we all have to do. And I like to teach sports and baseball, and hopefully, I continue for a few more years. My body hold up. Thank y'all for having us.
Association. I think we've got quite a few members. I'd ask them to please stand and be recognized. <coughs> Thank y'all so much for being here. We appreciate y'all being interested in what we do as a board. And I appreciate what y'all do and your uh, learning and your association. It's so important uh, as these associations we have for our different